Picking a tennis racket can be hard, especially when there's so many different brands and specs and types of rackets out there. Sometimes it can be frustrating when you're trying to pick a racket for yourself. In this video, I want to highlight why I switched from a Pro Staff to a Clash to Babala Pure Strike. First off, the Pro Staff. Back in high school, I actually played with the K-Blade 98. That was a racket I used at the time and it got me through high school. Though looking back as a beginner tennis player, I probably should have used something with a bigger head size for the size and level of play I was at. I was give or take like 110 pounds and my strategy of tennis at the time was get it over the net. That was about it. So six years later, I haven't touched a tennis racket at all and I decide to get back into tennis. So I go to the store and I start looking for rackets that are similar to the one I had in high school. And I came across the Pro Staff here. Head size was similar, it was the Wilson name, it had Federer on it, all black, looked really cool. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go with this racket. It's gonna make me a better tennis player. I'm gonna learn a bunch of new stuff and just start crushing balls. That kind of happened. Uh, this is definitely a more control racket and it's heavy. Now, the funny thing is, when my friends pick up this racket, they're like, yo, this is such a light racket, like, I love this thing. And I'm like, try swinging it for two hours straight at maximum effort. Now, I played baseball uh, when I was a little kid, and I still have that feeling for I want something heavy in my hand when I'm swinging. So I have this tendency to get heavier rackets, because it just feels better to me. Now, I customized this racket, and one of the main things I did was shaving down the handle itself. Uh, this is made of wood, and so what the shop did for me was they made the racket grip smaller. The reason why I did that is because I have short fingers, kind of brawny hands, but I wanted something that felt really slim in my grip. The problem that created, though, was that I made my racket super head heavy where all the weight of the racket was in the tip of the head here. For my serves, this works really well because it felt like a sledgehammer when I come down on that ball and just, I would do a flat head serve and that ball would just rip. And with the smaller head size, it felt pretty good. If I could get it in that pocket, it was like kaboom. The problem was with shaving all the weight off this handle and making it smaller, I was muscling through my forearm and my arm in general to hit my basic ground strokes and my serves. And that was wreaking havoc on my forearm to the point where I could only play for about 10 minutes or so before this arm would start seizing up, cramping up, and twitching and all that kinds of stuff. After playing with this for several months, I decided to switch to a racket that was more arm friendly. And thus I was introduced to the Clash. At the time, I decided to switch up my playing style. I wanted to go for more topspin and more power versus just control and placement. Uh, this is a bigger head racket size, so 100 square inch, and so it has more of a sweet spot and is more forgiving on your shots. The ball doesn't go exactly where you want it to go, but if you're aiming for general spots in the courts, this helps you get there. I love this racket because it helped heal my arm when I was in my season last year. I was playing slash practicing about four to five times a week, which is a lot of stress on your body and your main arm in general. The bigger head size did help me improve my game with doing more topspin. I wanted to see how much shape, how much arch I could get in the ball when I hit it and just go for some raw power. So I didn't really care about control at this point. I was just testing out some new techniques. Now where I live, we only have hard courts. We don't got any clay courts or grass courts. One of these days I would love to try this racket on a clay court or grass court and really try out the top spin and the shots I have to see how they would work or not work on clay court or grass court. I didn't switch anything in the handle this time, but I did add a bunch of lead tape 
Now the lead tape adds weight to the racket. So what I did was I added a bunch of lead tape through the handle and the base of the handle here, through the throat and through the head as well. This kind of helped balance the racket and it did make it slightly head heavy. Not as head heavy as my pro staff, but close because I was still, I still like that swing weight uh, coming through. I also increased the tension to 58 pounds. The reason for that is there's so much flex technology in this racket that it absorbs all the power when you're playing against really good opponents. So the guys I would play that would hit really hard, hit really fast, they have a lot of pace on their ball. This would just absorb it, and when I would try to throw that power right back at them, it would just absorb all of it and my ball would just die. So I felt like I was getting pushed on the court quite a bit, even though I was hitting just as hard as the other guy, it wasn't outputting the power I wanted. The current racket setup is the Babala Pure Strike VS. Now this racket, I love this racket. As a smaller head size, it's head light slash balanced for me. So this time I moved away from the head heavy aspect uh, to help save my arm, but also I have been changing my playing style and I'm trying to be consistent. I've been doing a lot of work on my serve and my, my basic ground strokes where I'm making my body work for me, not against me. And I learned that my playing style is I like to do the work. I don't like the racket to do the work. I like to force the ball, push the ball kind of thing. So having a head light or a bounce racket really helps me control the ball better and put on power where I want to and take off power when I want to. I didn't do any customizations to this racket. Uh, except for, I guess, the overgrip that I have on this. Uh, this racket, when you get it out of stock, comes with a leather grip. And the leather grip is pretty darn cool, but it hurts your hand like no other if you're not used to it. I played with it for 20 minutes the first time I got it, and my inside of my hands felt like they were going to rip off. Like, it just, it just is super rough on your hands. So, I went to the overgrip just like the rest of my rackets, I was pretty used to that. And I surprisingly like the leather grip underneath my overgrip. I actually have two of these rackets. If I break a string or break a racket by accident, accident, uh, <laughs> I can just switch right over to the other racket that I have and not worry about switching to one of my other rackets that are completely different setups. Another reason being, uh, I want to stick with improving my form for a while. I don't want to have to jump between a bunch of different rackets. If I want to improve my techniques and my playing style, I need to stick with one racket so I learn how my positions, my strokes, my serves change with my body, not with my racket. There's a saying I heard where uh, the racket doesn't make the player, the player makes the player. Don't think that just buying a brand new racket right off the shelf is going to be like, ah, oh, this is going to make you a better player, this is going to make you a pro. It's not. It's going to be practice and working on your form and technique. If any of you guys have a demo program in your area, I highly suggest using that. Uh, one of our local shops here has a demo program where you can demo some rackets and go try them out for a couple days before buying a racket. One of my methods for demoing a racket is I go rent out a ball machine and I go hit with one racket for like a half hour. Just backhands, forehands, volleys, serves, all of it. And you get a real feel for the racket uh, versus just hitting a couple strokes and then switching quickly to another racket. That doesn't really help you get a feel for how the racket actually works. Then after that half hour, you switch to another racket and you feel all the nuances in it and see if you really like the racket or not. And then if you do happen to buy a racket or you have one that you like and you stick with, you play with it for a season or for a year or for a couple years. And keep track, keep in mind all the nuances with the racket of what you like, what you don't like, and start building a mental uh, catalog of things with the rackets. 
so that when you go to buy a new one, you already have an idea of what you want and what works for you and what doesn't work versus having to feel like you're starting from scratch every single time. When I'm swinging this racket, does it feel good for the first 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Or can I swing this thing for two hours and my arm's still okay? Or at the current level of tennis am I playing at, is this racket hurting me or helping me? Or is it just my form and technique is trash and I need to work on that? In that case, don't even worry about the racket. Just go out and practice. So anyway, that's kind of what I have for you guys today. If you guys want to see how I do some of my practices, what I did to go undefeated in my season last year in one of the local leagues I was in, kind of that story or that insight, let me know. I learned a lot from that season of some things you should do and not do when it comes to playing club tennis, local tennis, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, in the meantime, I'm going to be making more videos and get outside and practice. I'll see ya. Oh. <laughs>